Shields up, Ironbreakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Neo 2, and today I'm going to be bringing you my Hatchets build. As you guys know, when I started playing through the game, uh, I actually started by using the Hatchets, and I, even though I really enjoyed the weapon itself, I like throwing them, I like the moveset, I like just about everything in this weapon, I still feel like they were tremendously underpowered, at least in early game. But I always figured that, like, you know, when I get to end game, I want to do, like, a proper hatchets build and after a lot of testing this is the build that i kind of came up with right so it's not going to be super original in terms of the set that we're going to be using because there's exactly one set that is really good for hatchets so i'm going to be focusing on that it is the bold and the burish and uh, this is onishibata's set and we're going to be using naturally the hatchets themselves from this set and then as a secondary weapon we're going to be using azai chimonji which comes from the boss Azai Nago Mata, whatever. I'll, I'll show you guys where you can farm uh, this stuff. But on top of his sword, we're also going to be using one of his armor pieces because we want to get a three piece set. Naturally, we're going to need to have a Yasakani because this is kind of like, you know, something that you just got to have for most end game builds. Uh, if you are not at end game yet and you want to try to play the, something similar to this set, then just focus on Onishibata's set because it's one of the best ones. Uh, but yeah, this you can get by basically beating New Game Plus or by using a different farming method that you can just look up on YouTube, farm Yasakani. There's going to be like a thousand different videos popping up. I feel like I don't need to add to that. Uh, in terms of ranged weapons, you can use whatever you want. Uh, we got the Ravenwing rifle here because basically it gives you life train on bullseye. And according to Fighting Cowboy, who is someone that I talk to a lot, and I saw some of his videos, he says that the hatchet throws can actually benefit from uh the bullseye bonus on the on the this set on Saika Yatagarasu's set so i figured we'd use that as well and then we have a warrior of the west bow just to get a little bit additional health now i actually don't know where you can get warrior of the west bow because uh there's still a lot of items that people don't know exactly where they fall i got mine off of revenants because i was farming revenants for other things that i needed and one of them dropped Warrior of the West Bow. If you don't have Warrior of the of the West Bow, it's not really the end of the world. Don't stress too much about it. Uh, then naturally on the armor piece, we have uh, four pieces of Onishibata and one of Kohoku, which is Azai's armor set, which is gonna give you this Shar Saruyasha's Valor. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, why are you going for that specific set? Uh, because it's going to give you anima charge and one of the things that I still agree on is that even at endgame you can do some pretty beastly throws with the hatchets but overall the hatchets are not the most powerful of weapons so having additional anima charge is going to allow me to use the you know the, the guardian spirits a lot more and naturally once you finish the game you got that otakamaru soul core that just allows you to melt through enemies so you get a, a decent combination of stuff when you put this whole thing together so this is the other set piece that we're going to be focusing on also we get amrita gauge charge uh so if you ever get in a tough spot you're in a bind you can just pop out your guardian spirit form you're, you're going to yokai shift and you'll be fine because you're charging your amrita gauge a lot faster so it gives you a couple of um, a couple of defensive options there as well so uh let's take a look at the status that we are working with for this build so we're going with 30 heart you only really need i think about 28 to make this build work but you know i, I just like having better round numbers when it comes to that stuff as a matter of fact i almost want to have 10 strength instead of seven except there's no real benefit because i just need seven to equip my armor um so yeah uh we got 10 magic we got 15 dexterity because we need those for the items that we're going to be getting from both magic and dexterity 99 skill because that's like our main stat uh 20 stamina so that we have a little bit of weight to put on onishibata's set and then the, the other dump stat that we're going to be going for is Courage. As a matter of fact, if we take a look at our weapon here, you'll notice that it is scaling off of both uh, Skill as well as Courage. You can change this, for those of you that do not know, as you get into the end game, there's a function that allows you to remodel your weapon to scale off of two stats instead of just one. And I picked Skill and Courage to have just way more key regen so that I can basically throw my hatchets more often and do more stuff. Now, an important thing about the, the stuff that I tempered onto this weapon, which is another end game mechanic, you go and you temper it at the blacksmith and you can change the different skills that you have on this weapon. Important thing about this is that 
you know, you want to get your attack bonus off of skill, because that's our biggest stat right now, so that will increase our damage by quite a bit. We want to get some burn accumulation on enemies, because we are going to be playing off of fire, which means this build might not be as strong against enemies that are not weak to fire, but, you know, it is what it is. I wanted to focus on a specific aspect of this. Uh, we got some active skill key damage. Not super important, but it's good. We got some life drain on active skill. Again, I don't actually think that this is that worth it. I put it in there, but to be honest, I don't really care that much about it. And then we have imbue fire. Um, so this whole fire thing is important because we're going to have um, a couple of soul cores here that increase our enema regen when we are attacking enemies that are on fire. Okay. So, if we go into the shrine here, I can show you guys the Guardian Spirit. Naturally, we have to use Tengen Kujaku because he's like the best at everything. Well, almost everything at least. And in the Soul Cores, we got a Takamaru because it's just completely and utterly broken. Uh, and then we have an Enra Soul Core because it is going to give us Anima bonus if an enemy happens to be on fire as well as more Anima. Then we have the uh, Wheel Monk Soul Core which is going to give us more Anima bonus if the enemy is on fire. A little bit of dash key consumption and you can also use this to put the enemy on fire just like you can use an Enra to put the enemy on fire if you so choose to. But ideally you want to save your Anima for Otakimaru because that's just going to melt through most things that you need to right uh for our secondary spirit we're going to be going with kagewani which gives us life drain on yokai ability hit so whenever you pop your otakimaru boom you're just full health basically that's the way that it goes or even uh other things like any of the other soul cores that you pop it's going to give you a little bit more health um on that as well which is you know a little bit more survivability is always nice so now, in terms of skills, uh, this, you can choose a lot of things when it comes to the hatchets. There's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of flexibility with what you can do with this weapon. Now, one of the things that I would consider to be uh, pretty essential to this build is the Deadly Spiral, because we're going to be using this quite a bit. This is the secret hatchet skill. Uh, it can be farmed in the mission that I will show you guys in this video. It's Onishibata, which is the same place that you're going to be farming your armor set and your weapon as well. Now, besides Deadly Spiral, another very important skill is All Ablaze. This is like your uh, buff skill for the hatchet. It's going to increase your damage, increase your movement speed, also allows you to run through the levels a little bit faster. And um, the, the downside is that it's going to reduce your defenses a little bit, but you should be fine in most situations. Now, you can get your combo finishers for high stance, but I don't think they're super important because usually when I'm in high stance, I'm tossing hatchets, and whenever I'm actually fighting, I'm going to drop down to mid stance. And also, because of Tengen, you want to be in high stance long enough to get your a bonus and after that you can just like swap to medium stance if you want to or if you want to toss a hatchet swap back to uh, high stance which by the way uh, you know the, the hatchet skill that we're going to be using is the piercing hurl light which charges up your hatchets faster the mystic art that we're going to be using is train throw which i don't know why it wasn't selected it should have been selected there but train throw is the one that we're going to be focusing on and um this basically gives you uh, a timing based thing which whenever you charge up a hatchet there's like three levels of charge you have to let go exactly once it hits the third level of charge um then for the combo finisher in mid stance uh even though again usually in mid stance we're going to be spinning to winning with deadly spiral but if you want a combo finisher i'd advise bell ringer because it really melts through people's key which is really good which does a really nice combination with wolf's rage if they happen to be blocking so those two skills are skills that i would highly advise you guys to get uh, I have a little bit of additional key in here. I haven't really made up my mind onto all the things that I'm going to be doing with the hatchets, but uh, I ended up going down the the less health you have, the more damage you do, but you don't have to do that. That's going to be comp completely up to you. All of these other skills, like I said, the important ones is Deadly Spiral, All Ablaze, Piercing Hurl Light, Train Throw, uh, and then for combo finishers, if you want, Bell Ringer and Wolf's Rage. Everything else is really up to personal preference. Once it, when it comes to your ninjutsu, the one thing that I do want to use in this build is quick change because I've kind of gotten used to it. And um, I used to play hatchets with um, with light armor. So you guys can imagine that was, uh, yeah, pretty harsh. I would die a lot. So quick change scrolls come very handy. And they also allow you to take 
uh, more um, advantage of the, the whole situation of you, oh, I'm low on health, I'm going to deal more damage. You know, you can play a little bit riskier with the quick chain scrolls. Then when it comes to Onmyo magic, you're going to want to get the fire talisman naturally because a lot of our build is going to be around getting fire. You're going to want to get your arch yokai talismans to increase the amount of anima gained whenever you are at a boss because it, all of this thing is going to synergize from the fire damage, from putting them on fire, and then arch yokai talismans just getting tons and tons and tons of anima so that you can do uh, otakemaru as often as you can. You got the barrier talisman, which is pretty much a given in most builds like this. So yeah, these are the three scrolls that you really want to focus on. Barrier talisman, fire talisman, arch yokai talisman, and then quick change scrolls on the ninjutsu side of things. Now when we get to skill customization uh again i don't know why this thing is not saving my goddamn art save doesn't matter whatever just make sure that you got your train throws in there anyway uh in high stance you naturally gonna get piercing hurl light and we're gonna put damage boost skill on that you can go to the samurai tree figure out which ones you want to get but damage boost skill i would definitely advise you to get this is like your highest damage bonus for the hatchet throw then on Demon Undercut, if you have Masterful Slice, you should probably get that. Uh, although, you know, you can get Demon Undercut or not get Demon Undercut. It's not super important. I just like to fill out all of the different stuff that you can have on each weapon when I play them. Uh, if you're using Dragonfly, I'd advise you to put, like, your secondary stat damage there in case you want to do Dragonfly mixed with Piercing Hurl to get a couple of hatchet uh, throws in. It's pretty good. Uh, and then in Mid Stance... Deadly Spiral, you're going to put Imperious Strike. This comes from the uh, Shiftling skill tree. It's fairly easy to get to, uh, and it increases the amount of anima gained whenever you hit the opponent with this skill. And this skill, you're spinning around. So you're spinning around, you're dealing fire damage, you're burning them, you're getting bonus anima from the fact that they're on fire, you're getting bonus anima from the fact that you're using an elemental attack, you're gaining bonus anima uh, from the fact that um, you got this modifier on the attack. So you're going to be getting a lot of bonus anima as you are attacking these enemies so that you can use your soul cores more often. That's kind of like the purpose of the build. That's why I got all these stats, all this stuff put together. Now, when it comes to where you can farm the stuff that I have on this build, uh, so the first one, you're going to want to go to Dawn. And in actually, it's not Dawn, or is it? It is Twilight. Yeah, in Twilight, you want to do Ruin Draws Near, which is the mission that we will do in this particular video. Uh, Ruin Draws Near is for a lot of your armor pieces, uh, for the hatchets, as well as for the secret skill. Uh, for other things, like I said, Warrior of the West, I don't actually know where you get that, and I've been looking it up online. I still haven't been able to find any reliable information. But... Um, for the two other pieces that we are using, the mission is Yaksha Returns, uh, which is basically just you fight this guy. He's like super easy to deal with uh, in most situations. So you just go in there, beat the crap out of him, and you should be able to get uh, the recipe for his armor. And then you just get one drop of his weapon. And it doesn't even have to be green. It can be any color. It doesn't really matter because it's just the secondary thing that you're going to equip on your set. It's, its stats are not even going to count. So just get his weapon and uh, craft one of his armor pieces. Now for Ravenwing, he is in Dawn and the mission is the third word. Uh, you basically fight um, Saika Yatagarasu or whatever his name is and he is going to drop his rifle. And again, it's kind of like a secondary thing so it doesn't even have to be like maximum rarity if you don't want to. And that's pretty much it. So considering that you're going to be running this particular mission quite a bit in order to do this build, I figured it would be a good mission to showcase in the video. So this is Ruin Draws Near, this is the Onishibata mission, and you're going to need to get run through this mission to get the recipe for both your armor as well as your hatchets and also get your secret skill. Okay, so we're going to be running through this level, and before we actually begin, I'm going to explain to you guys the basics of the train throw mechanic in your mystic art. So the way this works is we're going to be tossing hatchets mostly in high stance or pretty much only in high stance because that's like where you can get the real big meaty damage. So the way that this works is when you charge up a hatchet for throwing, you'll notice that you're going to hear three distinct sounds going to like ching, ching, ching. And then you want to let go precisely at the third one. So notice how the last one gives you a little bit of a higher pitch, ting, ting, ting. 
right? That one. That is exactly when you want to let go. So I'm going to try and do it. I actually missed this one. Let me try that again. There you go. You see like a blue glow after you do it right. You'll see a blue glow directly in front of you. Like that. That means that you got it right. If you don't see the blue glow, like if I just keep it pressed. Notice how there's no big blue glow immediately after the, th the throw. Uh, that means that you're doing it wrong. So you gotta practice this a little bit. I myself still haven't gotten the throws 100% of the time, but, you know, it is what it is. That's how you take full advantage and deal the most possible damage with these hatchets. Now, we're gonna be running through this level because basically you wanna optimize your farming routes. And this actually allows me to showcase that you can also use the buff of the hatchets instead of like using a tiger running scroll or something like that, which a lot of people like to use when they're running through levels. So if we pop our buff right here, and then we pop a uh, barrier talisman to increase our key regeneration. We just kind of like start running. I'm going to catch a couple of these um, checkpoints along the way. Just in case you happen to die midway through the run. I'll show you the different checkpoints that you can pick up. So first checkpoint is this right here. I'm going to pray at this shrine. This will reset all of the enemies. And in case you die, uh, you can basically respawn here and continue your progression through the level. So let's go ahead and pop our buffs again with another barrier talisman right there. Now, the next one that we're going to be doing is we're going to bring down that ladder that you guys see on the left by going up on this ladder. I hate when he does this. Sometimes he shoots you off of the ladder just to kind of like show that he's a badass or something. Kind of pisses me off a little bit. But anyway, we're going to go through the stairs right here. Once we get through the stairs, there's going to be a skeleton there at the bottom. You want to zigzag a little bit. Make sure you don't make yourself an easy target so that he doesn't shoot you directly in the face. Then we're going to go through here, drop this ladder. That's your checkpoint number two. We're going to run past this wheel monk right here. We're going to get our checkpoint number three, just in case you happen to need it, which is at the very end of the level here. I'm going to make a left, and there is a staircase here. And I actually like the drop down at this point. Like, you can see that the shrine that you rested at earlier is over there. This guy comes down, follows you. You can just, like, kill him. Forever he's like a human, so he's not going to be too much of a hassle. Then, we're going to run on through, we're going to go for the next stage, which is going to be right here on the right. You're going to want to bust up this bell. This is going to stagger them a little bit. And just run right through the fire, even if you catch fire, it's fine. Just don't put yourself in the path of the Ipon the Tar, because that's just asking for trouble. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to rebuff. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Just rebuff here. So that we get our speed buff again. Run past all these enemies. You can even run through the fire if you want to. You're probably not going to catch flame. Careful with the Yuta over here. He's very dangerous. Kick down this ladder. And then you can actually just run right through. Kill this guy. Hopefully the Yuta will not follow us. Let me use a deadly spiral here to clean this up. Perfect. Yuta did not follow us. Here is the boss. We're going to fully rebuff ourselves. So that's the barrier. That's our quick change scroll, fire. Make sure that you're in high stance. Pick up the Amrita. This. Swap again. Charge your hatchets. Finally, go on in. There's quite a bit of buffing to do with this uh, particular build. Hatchet to the face. Now you can kind of just like go ham with Deadly Spire a little, little bit. Just be careful because he can be a little bit dangerous with his spear. Do remember that you got Deadly Spiral on mid stance. Hopefully, you've been paying attention to the video. And we broke him. Down he goes. When he gets back up, give him the spiral again. Just kind of like spam him down. This is bad, but this is why you got quick change scrolls. And he's gonna be a little bit of a nuisance. But it's fine. Just. Chase him down a little bit, give him a little bit of the high stance bust. And he's down. You don't even need to speak with him, you can actually just move forward immediately after you kill him. And we actually charged up our gauge quite a bit, which is going to allow us to open up with Otake Maru on the final boss. He's going to pray at this shrine here. Now we should do something, which is open up a shortcut. I'm notoriously bad at opening this shortcut, so forgive me if I fail at it. As a matter of fact, I recorded this run earlier and I made a mistake and I didn't even open the shortcut. But anyway, you go through here, drop on this log. Then in here, you're going to immediately make a right and you're going to want to drop this. Now, after you drop this, uh, 
You can actually just drop on down as the thing is dropping because there's a ladder right here. But after you drop this, you want to come back. Oh, come on. Fine, be like that. Like, these hatchets will still do work. And I messed up. But that's fine, because we dropped the thing. We just got to come back and recover our body down here. The main point is that we wanted to drop that particular um, log, because that is basically the shortcut that allows you to run faster to the boss if you want to. Uh, let me just go ahead and pick up my corpse here. Oh wait, we already picked it up because we have auto grave recovery and some stats in our build. But anyway, then you're going to run through here, run past all these dudes like they don't even matter after you run past them. Up here there's a wheel monk you're going to have to deal with before you engage the boss. You can just like high stance auto attack him. Oh, we actually got followed here. And yeah, we might actually die if I'm not careful. What? Oh, really, dude? Okay. There we go. Everything's cleared up and ready for the boss fight. Gonna heal myself again. I actually spent a little bit too many resources there, but should be fine. Once again, make sure that you are in high stance when you are doing this, because you want to use that Umrita in a high stance. Why I did those attacks there? I think I just reverted back to Dark Souls uh, muscle memory for whatever reason. Anyway. Big boy is going to come in right charging at you, so charge up a hatchet. Oh, wow. You're still able to pull that off? Okay, fair enough. Get up, do an Otakemaru, because you're probably going to be full anyway, so... Now, get back to Deadly Spiraling. Look at how fast we're already getting another Otakemaru. Right there, it's another one. And you can just basically spend to win. And we actually got a smithing text and everything. But anyway, as you guys can see, the build is pretty powerful. You can do some pretty beastly damage with it. But a lot of it comes from stuff that is not necessarily connected to the hatches themselves, unfortunately. Because like I said, I still feel like they're not that powerful. And um, doing a speedrun, I'm not sure how much you really showcase the power of the build. I guess killing this boss, which a lot of people seem to... I think it's really hard, I guess it's a good showcase, but ultimately, this build really shines when you're going through levels and murdering uh, enemies at range. Like, when you're going through a level actually doing it properly and killing people at range with hatchets, that's when the stuff really shines, but it can still um, deal some decent damage. Now, as you guys know, at this point, if you did not get the smithing text that you would have wanted, you will want to go here, return to title screen, reset the whole thing. This will let you come back and have another shot at the boss until you get the smithing text that you want. And after you get one, then you just do the level all over again, you know, farm your stuff out. But the build works. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. Uh, I can't wait to show you guys my two-handed axe build, which is considerably more powerful uh, than this. Uh, but I wanted to show the hatchets build first because it is a weapon that at the end of the day I'm still pretty passionate about. So just let me know what you guys think about it. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you did not enjoy the video, hit the dislike button. Feedback is important. Subscribe if you usually enjoy my content and I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay strong and may your shields never break.